Anxiety is like the opposite of getting your dick sucked. Take the blowjob, for instance. When the lips make first contact, the world changes. The warmth starts to settle at the surface of the skin. The blood rushes, tingles form from the tip of the toes to the fingertips. George Orwell once said, the quickest way to end a war is to lose it. I think it's blowing the enemy. When the head of my cock rests on the tongue of a goddess, streams of pleasure shoot from my happy limb to the other four. Everything screams more, more. She edges me up and down. Her warm breath mixes with wetness and brings me to a heaven I never knew existed. And yes, there are definitely blowjobs in heaven. I believe it's the sixth commandment that says thou shall not have a gag reflex. God damn, this feels good. I mean, gosh damn. Sorry, God, that's the third commandment. Thou shall not take the name of the Lord in vain when your main vein is being drained. This feels too good. I'd give anything for this to never end. Every so often, she looks me in the eyes and lets me know that we're both connected. Friction, connection, then eruption. Loss of all control, letting go. Now, take panic. When anxiety makes first contact, the world also changes. The numbers now are so striking. 45,000 suicides occurred in the United States. The rise of anxiety and depression. Realize that it's a lot more common than you think. A coldness starts to do with the surface of the skin as blood pumps away from the extremities towards the heart. But this pumping isn't from pleasure. It's from that first flick of fear. I rush away from the sensations, trying desperately to build a wall. If I build it high enough and quickly enough, this feeling will go away. But that notion only feeds the beast. Fear. The most natural response to anxiety is the fuel that burns it brighter. God's sick chain reaction. The anxiety deepens. As the tips of my fingers clench and my jaw tightens, I can feel my heart beat between my ears. And then, for a split second, relief. I'm distracted by my own thoughts. I glance at a photo that reminds me of our Greece family vacation when me and my brother stayed out at Toy Room in Mykonos until 6 a.m. That was nice. That felt nice. Oh, Molly. In an instant, the sweet warmth of a past high is swept away as my mind refocuses on the fact that I'm swiftly approaching the panic point of no return. She edges me up and down. That's right, anxiety is also a she. Like the goddess of pleasure, a woman is the only form who knows how to truly bring a man to his knees. A cruel beast. Her cold touch mixes with my most irrational thoughts, launching me into a hell I never knew existed. God damn, this shit sucks. No apologies this time, God. If you created this world, then why the fuck would you leave us modern humans with a debilitating instinct that ran its evolutionary course thousands of years ago? As far as I know, the closest thing to saber-toothed tigers left in Brooklyn are laser-eyed, blue-haired feminist rage monsters, and their bark is way worse than their bite. So why does my brain flip this switch into a constant lurching of danger? I'd give anything for this feeling to end. Actually, give me the saber tooth instead. At least then I'd have a fucking reason for why I feel like I'm dying. But no. Instead, it's anxiety. The tormentor I cannot touch. Here I am standing face to face with the faceless beast. She somehow looks me in the eyes and lets me know that I'm no longer connected to the world I once knew. Friction. Disconnection. Implosion. Taking all control. Please, please fucking let go. How can the goddess of pleasure and the beast of anxiety exist in the same world, in the same hour? One makes you come, the other come apart. Mirrored and designed, the bliss of heaven and darkness of the abyss lie on either side of the chasm. The pleasure and panic of the mind shoot down the messenger of reality and grip you within their own. Whose reality am I in now? Pleasure. I can't believe this is happening. <sighs> Panic. I can't believe this is happening. Pleasure. Oh, fuck, my heart's beating pretty fast. Oh, I'm gonna fucking explode. Panic. Oh, my heart's beating pretty fast. 
Oh, fuck, is it gonna explode? Pleasure. You want another drink? Let's go back to my place. Panic. Did somebody dose my drink? I just want to get back to my place. You know, I'm, I'm sure at the time, like when you're experiencing that panic attack, the last thing you want to do is kind of search or uncover the impetus for what's causing that panic attack. You want to escape. You want to run away. You want to go mm -hmm. to the hospital. You want a doctor to look at you and say, hey, everything's good. You know what I mean? Like the last thing yeah. you want to do is uncover what's going on internally. And it wasn't until I saw, I don't know, 12 psychologists, psychiatrists, that I started to realize that these panic attacks are, you know, you're like, your mind is so fucking powerful. It is so powerful, you know, and it can seriously be the protagonist or the antagonist of your life.